All right, Duncan Tico back once again, episode number five. Who this kid's dad is, LeBron James, and Bronny James getting drafted at number 55 in the NBA draft. And I would like to say what Woj had to say, which was, hey, I don't want to hear anything about nepotism and all this other stuff and looking out for his son because that's going on all over the world, especially in the NBA with owners, executives, coaches, and so on. Why wouldn't LeBron James do whatever he could to look out for his son if that was the case? Even if it's not the case, the man get a chance to get in the uh, NBA and play. I think it's going to be a situation where he's going to be able to have a huge following during this summer league. A lot of people will be watching that. Probably the, the biggest summer league ever watched before. Probably will go to the G League and play and have that build up to playing with his dad. I, I predict on Christmas Day, Lakers game, that'll be LeBron James Jr. Uh, premier in the NBA with his dad. Now, I like the way you just scripted it out. Let me let me take a couple of stabs at this thing. Uh, but that's that's beautiful punctuation, exclamation on the end with that Christmas Day Lakers game. But let that's me tell me. you this. So uh, one of the things that people got to stop acting is acting as if Bronny, Bronny Jr. can't play basketball. Exactly. You know, the, the guy has game. You know, whether he has game that you think is justified or not doesn't matter. Y'all acting like the dude can't even dribble or shoot. You know, he has been around basketball. <laughs> play basketball at a high level. The guy is capable uh, of making this journey. And those people involved with NBA and analytics, they know more about it than we know about it. And, and, and plus this, now let me, let me, let me also hit you with this, Chico. There was a guy named Reginald Lewis, may he rest in peace. He, he owned uh, Beatrice Foods, the largest food company in the world. Black guy, this was a brother. He wrote a book called, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? All the Fun, yep. This stuff, whether you look at it from the negative side that it's just nepotism, this stuff has been taking place since America was America. But now there's some brothers doing it. Now y'all want to change the rules. Bronny yeah. James ain't nepotism because Bronny James can play. And if Bronny James was nepotism, man, hats off to him. Do you know how much Lakers merchandise is going to be sold? Do you know how many Lakers games are going to be on TV? Do you know how many people are going to want those Bronny ones when they come out? And hey, this is this ain't nepotism. <laughs> this is capitalism, not nepotism. Uh, you have what that's it the takes. United States, right? Oh, uh, Phil Thonet. <laughs> Phil Thonet. <laughs> it, it, this is what it's about. It's about eyeballs on screens and about butts in seats. And Bronny James increases all those. Plus, he can make a basket or two. What's wrong yeah. with it? I say hats off to the James family, man. Congratulations. Cannot wait to see them play together. Just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about this gray hair. I remember seeing Ken Griffey and Ken Griffey Jr. play together in baseball, mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful yes, time. I, I can't wait to see this. Ken Griffey Jr. was one of my favorites, and yes, he did get to play with his dad, Ken Griffey Sr. I think this will be the first time in the NBA you'll see a father-son duo like this. Ken Griffey Jr. And then it was another guy, and uh, it was Tim Raines and Tim Raines Jr. I think played with the Baltimore Orioles and a couple other old schoolers before that. But this will be the first time in the NBA we'll see it like this. And uh, I think they're going to build up to it. And it's going to be a huge spectacle uh, throughout this season. And why not? You know, especially if the Lakers end up not in contention for a championship. Hey, man, we're going to bring all the eyes we can. And I'll say this, too, if you're talking about a script being uh, a scripting it out. I'll say this. LeBron James doesn't he has more than just one year or two years left. So having Absolutely. said that. He might be the first one to play with both his sons. Bryce James is not too it, far it, behind. It, it absolutely could happen. Let me also share share this with everybody out there. I know you're a Lakers fan and definitely. you get it, but let me also point point y'all into this direction if you're hating on it. There wasn't anybody available in the second round or third round or fourth round that would propel the Lakers to a guaranteed championship run this year. So why right. would you not? So it's not like you wasted a pick or threw away a pick. You did everything right for your franchise in this pick. Uh, mm -hmm. You're still going to have free agency where you can acquire people. Uh, you still got two to three years now with LeBron playing with you. You didn't throw away a pick on Bronny James, man. You you helped your franchise picking Bronny James. With that being said, hey, man, shout out to all my Lakers out there. If you're a Laker fan, put it in the chat right now. If you're a, hater, a Laker hater, let us know. Put it in the chat right now also but i think it's gonna be a good move for the lakers and lebron he'll be able to develop and they'll be able to get that that picture s moment that they want to have or that legendary moment should i say that they want to have 
and uh, play together. We get into the Colorado actual football right now. We see these guys working out. I saw you talking to Warren Sapp, and I think that was one of the best episodes on Wednesdays with Warren, and he addressed the defensive line and how they were uh, handling jumping off sides and stuff. What did you think about what he said on that? What did you take from it? And I'll give you my assessment afterwards. I thought it was just real, man. You know, Coach Sapp and I, we sit down on Wednesdays and we just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. What comes up, comes up, much like the discussions I had with you. Uh, and for him to acknowledge mm -hmm. that he had run into his first uh, challenges, if you will, as a coach, where he was even doubting if he was getting through as a coach because of the consistent and repetitive mistakes being made. And then he had to lean on to uh, mentors yeah. of his who told him that was just part of the process. And so keep going. So I love to see that growth and maturity in him as a coach uh, and understanding that just because they're not getting it right away doesn't mean you're doing something wrong uh, and that you're going to have moments like that, but you build off from them, you learn from them. So uh, I thought it was real deal Holyfield, man, for him to open up like that because he didn't have to, he didn't have to share that with us. Just hold your horses, watch the ball anyway. I always used to say to the defensive line, and I used to hear the defensive line coach saying, you're, you're, you're deaf as a defensive lineman. Don't, don't hear anything. Have your eye down on the ball, and you go in the ball move. That's it. And that way you'll never jump offside. Sap say he played all of those years, 13-plus years, had two offsides penalties. One was, one was on purpose to get back out of yeah. offensive linemen. So that shows you that discipline right there and what it takes to be a Hall of Famer. So shout out to Warren Sapp on that one. Yeah, and when you put the work in, big dog, and you trust your abilities, you don't have to try to beat the count or time it perfectly. Your speed right. will get you to where you make the play. A lot of guys who have doubt on their ability and technique, they're trying to beat the ball or go right at the ball to make up for that. Uh, but when you put the work in and you trust your ability, you can wait and watch the ball move. You can be deaf. It's just like you said, be deaf and don't hear anything. But also, I love what Coach Sapp said. He said, hut, 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 ain't nothing but dummy, dummy, dummy. <laughs> well, answer, they call your name. Your name ain't dummy. All the, whoever, whoever jumps on hut, all you did was answer to dummy. I love that. <laughs> That's so true right there. That sounds like a defensive line coach right there. Defensive line and offensive line coaches are usually the ones that got the, the, the just most unfiltered on the football field right there. So that was yeah. definitely a defensive line coach move right there by Warren Sapp. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see that. But I will say this, urge all defensive linemen, dog, anybody on the team, if you got Coach Sapp over here coaching up someone that's in your position group, dog, listen. You feel me? Go listen. Go find out. Go stand behind him. He talking to this guy, but shoot, he talking to me too. Yeah. You know, I'm not in right now. I'm listening to what he's saying. This is Warren Sapp. What am I doing? If he tell him to jump, not to jump off sides, I'd be dang <laughs> if I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go up there. And I'm going to jump off sides. That's going to be the one thing you're not going to catch me doing if I just heard my coach tell the next man not to do it, dog. Come on now. You, let me tell you something, Chico. I'm the youngest of three boys, and I got far less whippings than my older brothers. And it wasn't because I was a better kid. It's because <laughs> I learned from what they got their ass whooped for. Right. And so I learned to not do that and not get caught the way they got caught because I saw what would happen. And so if a coach is coaching – the twos and you are with the threes, you should be getting what they call mental reps and paying attention and not go out there and do the same mistake they just did. You should learn from their butt chewing. That way you don't get your shoe. And as simple as that, man, that's all you got to do. Learn and, and watch and listen. Your coach is coaching you at all times, man. Pay attention. There's no need for you to be over there. As my, my coach used to say, horse plan. Do they still use that term horse plan? Yeah, yeah. Horse playing, <laughs> uh, playing grab ass, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> playing grab ass. <laughs> I would say another one. I ain't going to bring that one up, though. But <laughs> Travis Hunter, I saw in the uh, – and uh, shout out to Coach Mo and the CU strength staff. They started posting a lot more stuff now. You can check them out at CU Buffs Strength, uh, strength and Conditioning, if I'm not mistaken. But Coach Mo and his staff, they have their Workers of the Week, which we addressed last time. But uh, – we see Travis Hunter getting a new personal best. Uh, I think it was the power clean he was doing. But just to see a guy like Travis Hunter, who you might say he doesn't have to work in the weight room. He doesn't have to be a leader. He, he, he's already made plays. He don't have to be out there trying to reach a personal best. But to see him out there doing that and giving his all in front of all of his teammates and everybody cheering him on, 
Uh, how do you think that translates to the team? What do you think that that's, that's, that's telling to the rest of the guy, the guys out there that's watching him doing these things? Oh, I, I love it because I think it does have a ripple effect. Uh, Travis Hunter is a God gifted talent. He has mm-hmm. a feet that you just can't get off the street or in a weight room. It came genetically through the blessing of the Lord above, and so a lot of people will see that. And, and, and they will try to say, well, you know, he doesn't have to work like we work because he just got it different. Well, what he's showing you is I'm working just as hard as you call, you are as should be. And not only by working, you're seeing the results of the work. He's put on 17 pounds of muscle. He's stronger. He's faster. His body is sturdier. Uh, he has fallen in love with the weight room and working out. And that ripple effect of like, man, if our best guy on the team is in here, you know, setting PRs and giving it his all, who am I to be slacking? You know, so let me get up and get after it too. So you see groups like the specialists even responding and winning yeah. the for the week. So uh, Travis Hunter, man, is one of those guys that's leading by example. And what he's accomplished this spring, summer session one with his body has been nothing short of amazing. And I think it's going to translate on the field and it's going to translate in that EA sports game because they're going to have to upgrade him every week. <laughs> they're gonna have to upgrade him every week. I don't know if they can get any, any higher. I think he's might be the highest rated guy behind what maybe the second highest rated guy, but I think he might be at a ninety seven or something. But he doesn't have too far to go. Yeah, he gonna get, get that ninety nine, and he gonna be ninety nine in every category. Definitely. All right. So um, got the NCAA football game coming out for the first time in a long time. I will be purchasing it and playing. Uh, a PlayStation 5. Now, I feel like an old school player who don't know nothing about it right now. You know what I'm saying? I got me a, I got a PlayStation 3 still. Now I got to upgrade to the 5. So we're going to see how that works out. And I might be playing a little some on, online and stuff like that. So uh, well, <laughs> are, you you gonna, are you going to indulge in it? What you going to do? Well, I'm another old school player. You see this gray. I got me. I have a <laughs> PS5. I have pre-ordered the game. And what we're going to do one of these, uh, when we introduce that Sunday live show to him, okay. me, me and you go go get us a little matchup live. We're going to play hey, some. Hey, that'll be dope right there. We need to yeah. do that. I'm going to go ahead and get mine today and download it there. How about that? <laughs> I've been procrastinating on it, you know, but I'm going to go ahead and do it and get it today and download it and be ready for it. Because I see how old school I am. I'm still thinking I got to go to the store and buy the disc. No, hey, you can download I, it now, dog. I'm so old school. That's what I want to do. I don't want to download it, man. What about this? <laughs> I need my tangible disc, right? I need it yeah. in my hand. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to playing that. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing. I'm 53, dog. I've been like that with everything. I, I remember uh, a, cu- a, couple, a couple of jobs ago, I was the last person to sign up for direct deposit, man. I want my check in my hand. Man. What y'all? What y'all talking about some deposit? Man? Deposit, hey, yeah. Hey, you put my money in my hand, man. Hey, I got joked on by before. I was one of the only ones taking my rent uh, or my what is it, cashier's check to go pay yeah. my rent. Yeah. And it was like, why don't you just pay it online? Pay it with the, with your with the phone. I'm like, what? Here, take the check. I know I'm paying you for sure. Now you know. <laughs> hand to hand, baby. Hand to hand. Same hands. time. Same, Same time. time too. <laughs> So that's what it is, man. Uh, uh, more Colorado football. This is last week coming up, right? Because we get ready for Fourth of July weekend. Um, yeah. In the, in the what, take, take, week take or two a break for for Fourth of July week, you know, which is essentially the weekend before the fourth and the weekend after. So uh, yeah. Monday the eighth, we'll be back at it. Go for about two and a half weeks, man. Then it's report for fall camp time. Uh, yep. When that and that first uh, practice for fall camp right now is slated. Uh, for Monday, July 29th, and uh, you got about a month, and then Thursday, August 29th is week one, North Dakota State at home. At home, the 29th, oh, man, that's a Thursday night game, right? And, yep. whew, that's going to be fire out there, man. I got to get there for it and uh, do some, you know, once we get there, we're going to have to do some live, you know what I mean? But Let's until then, until then, we're going to be talking more above football each and every week, y'all. Stay tuned right here. Uh, subscribe on Big Dog Chico channel or Uncle Neely's channel. He's coming to you live right now from Jackson, Mississippi. Shout out to Jackson, Mississippi, man. Give a shout out to all the, the places that you've been eating around that you've been visiting since you've been back home. Uh, shout out to some of the smaller businesses or whoever, just friends and family. Go ahead. Let's give a shout out right quick. Absolutely, man. Shout out to Stamp Burgers on Dalton Street. Not only best burger in Mississippi, best burger in the nation, not just 
my words, but restaurant industry awards have said so. Shout Stamp out to Burger? Stamps Burgers. Stamps Mr. Burgers. Stamps okay. Stamps Burgers. Uh, over right. on Dalton Street, right down the street from Jackson State. Shout out to Johnny T's Beach Yes, indeed. Uh, they still, man, got Coach Prime's uh, table with his name on the reserve. Still giving out the best. I stopped by there yesterday, man. Had the catfish. Oh! Mm. My gosh. Yeah. I need some, I, I, uh, I, I'm it made missing that, out. It made that humidity worth it. Hey, you see how beautiful Hawaii is, right? But yeah. The one thing that you would miss out here is if you're from the South, is that great Southern home cooked soul food, man. You can, they got a couple restaurants out here, but you know how restaurants are. They, they kind of make it bland so that it can fit everybody. Everybody can like it. No, yeah. dog, I need some, some collard greens, some cornbread, some black eyed peas, some real macaroni and cheese. I need real some, macaroni and cheese. You feel me? Some good old baked chicken. You understand me? I'm not even gonna get into the pork chops and nothing like that, though. I'll let y'all have those, but everything I'm talking, else. I'm talking, I'm talking about that mac and cheese where you getting ready to scoop it. It sounds like hot tool. Spit on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we out of here. We appreciate y'all joining. <laughs> hey, I did research for two days <laughs> trying to find this recruit named Hawk Tua Sakapaloa. <laughs> I'm like, I never heard of them out here, dog. Who the hell is Hawk Tua they talking about? And then I see this girl. She's, <laughs> man, and she sounded like she was from Alabama too, man. But, hey, shout out to her, dog. Hey, I'm going to leave it on that, man. We're going to be up out of here, man. Shout out to you guys from Honolulu, Hawaii. I appreciate y'all joining in. Once again, another show, Uncle Chico, Episode 5. Y'all know what to do, man. Hit the like, subscribe, comment, all the other good stuff. We're going to be up in about the same piece in the Middle East. Yeah. Peace. Talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Spit on it. <laughs>